everybody, Dear Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Color X Malis along IG and Aggie's route. Now I finally had some rest. Hopefully I can be a little bit more alert. Alright, so we're going to try and get into contact with Akito. Try to prevent him from committing any more X-Day crimes. See if we can find a way to salvage him. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Clenching my fist, I stood up. I was resolute. This was time for action. Just then, I heard a message alert. I checked, but it hadn't come from my phone. I think that's your phone, Yanagi. Yeah, I'm stepping out for a smoke break. Okay, see you soon. I need to make a call too. Hmm, I wonder what that's about. Yanagi checked his phone, grabbed his jacket, and went upstairs. I caught a glimpse of his expression, which had grown even more grim than it was before. Maybe it was just my imagination. Oh, good evening. When I took out my phone and scrolled through my contacts to call Kazuki, I saw someone approaching. Hey. Oh, I thought you'd be Okazaki. I haven't seen him in a while. Apparently I haven't seen Shirashi in a while either. I haven't seen you around here much recently, Shirashi. Well, I just have some minor business here. Shirashi usually stayed at the station. He didn't come here to the office often. Also, there hadn't been any new developments. Did something happen that I didn't know of? I would get a call from HQ if new developments had transpired, and Sasasaka would also have intercept-related transmissions. I watched Shiraishi enter the building, arms fluttering strangely. Huh? I returned my focus to my phone. I think I should head back in. Something fishy's going on. Well, he certainly does do his own thing. I felt like everything was coming together. Don't trust that feeling. I got a bad feeling. And here we'll find out some of it, hopefully. <laughs> it's awfully rare of you to call me over. It's not something we can discuss over the phone. It's not important to you, then. Shiraishi, I want to hear your take on this. Who do you think put that color on Hoshino? I have my theories! Oh, well, that question is completely out of the blue. Now is the time to ask. Hoshino is undoubtedly innocent. At the beginning, it was only natural to assume that she had a connection to Adonis, but those doubts no longer apply. She doesn't know anything. This isn't some kind of charade or ruse. I agree. She's not skilled enough to pull that deception off. So, if Hoshino is an innocent victim, we need to find the person that collared her. Hoshino's incident is an exception amongst all the other incidents. At least that's my assessment. They directly contacted us with a warning of her impending death. Additionally, we were provided with a way to save her life. Well, on the condition that the police were not informed. Yeah, so they wanted us to let her join us. To make her aware of something within the police force, so they struck a compromise with us. So by her, there has to be a very significant reason. It might even lead to the core of X-Day. Otherwise... They wouldn't have gone through so much trouble to execute something like this. The rank and file couldn't have done this. I don't think one of the memory-wiped pawns would have been tasked for this. So, it's probably one of the heads of Adonis. The driving force of Adonis. That's gotta be who put the collar on Hoshino. What's your hard evidence? My instincts. <laughs> well, I figured you'd say that. But I know your instinct isn't simply conjecture. X-Day incidents have been treated as terrorist attacks because Adonis is organizing them and their crimes with a larger purpose. Their leadership would not allow some underling to place a poisoned collar on a police officer in the name of their cause. In other words, Adonis's leadership decided to collar her or perhaps one leader decided it alone. Yeah, the voice from the collar also intimated that it represented the will of Adonis. So... If we discover who put the collar on her, it'll lead us straight to Adonis' heart. I doubt it'll be a simple matter, though. The reason for her collaring was vague. We have no idea what they meant by sympathizer. Still, I know you can narrow down the search. Two years ago, Adonis was exposed, thanks to your profiling work. That is what happened. After the assassination attempt on the PM. Yeah, that was it. 
And then I have a hypothesis to offer. It's almost certain that someone related to the police is responsible for the caller. They'd have frequent contact with the victim while maintaining the guise of their normal relationship. For example, someone she depends on in the investigation. If they know her situation, it's likely she still interacts with them. Most importantly, she was targeted. And that means the person had to know her. That'll do it for advice. I see. Our theory's basically a line. Oh, and Shiraishi. Yeah? I have one last question for you. What? <sighs> the day that Hoshino was ambushed, who delivered the letter from Adonis? Hmm. Huh. I mean, the letter that was addressed to us. Who do you think planted it? After they planted a warning in Section 1's files, they snuck into our office and left that second letter. Pulling that off is no easy feat. That much is obvious. Aren't you asking me questions that you already know the answer to? I'm not. I don't know. What I do know is that Adonis has a mole inside the police. But beyond that, my instincts conflict with the answer logic leads me to. It's quite annoying. <laughs> so it's not intuition then. Oh, I'd say that smacks of sentimentality. <laughs> You're too serious, Yanagi. Actually, that's not right. You're too kind. Why are you so attached to this mole? What reason do you have to protect them so much? Adonis is a large terrorist organization. It wouldn't be difficult at all to have someone masquerading as a civilian. We can't assume that they only have one spy. There's a chance that they have people lurking in the police force, but near us as well. In that scenario, they could have easily planted the letter in the office, and we'd have no idea who they were. Huh. Aren't you putting a little too much stock in your hypothesis? <laughs> you know, Okazaki is always lurking around. He could have infiltrated the office. What do your instincts tell you about him? He's innocent. He only cares about his mission. Oh, well, that's true. Then answer this. <sighs> Neither of us appreciates it when other people pry into our affairs, but it annoys us for different reasons. You have a lot of empathy for other people. You can't let them get close. Oh, I just don't care to. You know, that might be it. We get along perfectly with each other. We keep just the right amount of distance. Well, in my opinion, anyway. I suppose you're right. I feel the same way. I must say this surprised me. Every day since she came here, I figured you were going to come ask me this. What took so long? Should I, she? Instead, all this time you've been letting the most suspicious person do as he wishes. And his half-assed ruse isn't working anymore. Simple logic will provide your answer. You don't need a profiler to figure this out. He had access to Section 1's files, knew the timing of your group's operations, and stole into your locked office to leave the letter without a trace. There's only one person who could manage that. Kageyuki Shiraishi, me. Don't you agree, Yanagi? Are you being serious right now? Your face says you don't want to believe it. So, what do your instincts say? Do you think I'd lie to you just to mess with you? No. Huh. Well, there you have it. Is there anything that you plan on telling me then? Hmm. There isn't anything more I can tell you. I'm just a pawn as well. Hmm, I think you might have a little bit more to tell. But what the hell was up with that conversation? What are they going to do now? Hmm. I'm back. Huh? Was nobody here? When I returned from my phone call to Kazuki, only Anamoto and Sasazuko were in the office. Yunagi hasn't returned yet. He said he was going to smoke, right? He sure takes a lot of smoke breaks on the roof, even though it's cold as hell outside. He's probably just being considerate. Smoking indoors will stink up the place. Well, he's a manly man. Those guys aren't affected at all by the cold. At least not in manga or anime or otome games. Yeah, it would stain the walls, too. Can you really notice something like that? Oh, yeah. My grandfather was a chronic smoker, and the walls turned yellow in his house. Except for the spots where, like, things were hanging on the wall. 
So when you took them down, you had like a white spot on the wall? Totally. It'll turn your walls a dingy brown. All the walls in here are white, so I guess that would definitely show up. Wait, what? Did I just imagine it? I thought I heard a voice that didn't belong. Not again. Wait, how'd you get in here? Hmm? Through the door, like a normal person. And nobody noticed this? Don't just waltz in on nonchalant. Enough with the illegal trespassing already. Do you think our office is your break room or something? <laughs> Okazaki, not denying that remark, made me wonder if he really did think of it that way. <laughs> then I remembered, Okazaki had done me a huge favor recently. Um, Okazaki, thank you so much for your help earlier. Hmm? You looked out for my brother. Oh, yeah. Did that turn out okay? Yeah, I really appreciated it. My brother and I had a good talk later. Yeah? That's great to hear. He hadn't pried into the affair any further. Maybe he had decided that Kazuki had nothing to do with X-Day. Oh, you're very wrong about that. He's surrounded by X-Day on all sides. Eh? Oh, here comes Yanagi. Sorry to intrude. Are you running away from Yanagi? What are you doing here, Okazaki? Um, I'm passing through? <laughs> as always, Yanagi sighed in exasperation as soon as he laid eyes on Okazaki. I was expecting someone to chase him out, but maybe they knew it was a futile endeavor. Have his intrusions become normalized to them? Hoshino, did you make the call? Uh, yes. Yanagi addressed me. He was probably being non-specific since Okazaki was in the room. I'm still waiting for him to get back to me, so I'll let you know when it's set up. Alright. Well then again, I made the call outside, so Okazaki probably heard it, right? Then, I think I'll call it a day. I'd only given the minimal level of detail. I waited for Akito's response. I had work tomorrow, so I wanted to get home. A hot bath and some sleep sounded nice. I'll take you home. What? My plans for the evening so thoroughly dashed to pieces, I uttered a startled noise. This again? It's gonna be tough and try to throw him off now. Well? Err... Just let him. Huh? What? <laughs> you wanted to play that game, and Yanagi's not playing into it? I think he's a little busy right now, I think he's got something to deal with. I didn't expect Yanagi to just give up and let him have his way. Are you serious, Yanagi? I understand Hoshino being surprised, but why are you surprised? Because <laughs> you never say yes. I mean, are you sure? What if I was just waiting for my opportunity to make a move? Don't even say something like that out loud. You know trying that would just end up getting you hurt, so I know you won't. You're weird today, Yanagi. Yanagi had been very cautious toward Okazaki so far, so this struck me as odd. What had happened to cause this sudden change of heart? Or perhaps... Is this my fault? Ever since yesterday, it felt like Yanagi had grown somewhat cold toward me. I really did pry into his personal life quite a bit. That was the only reason I could think of. And realizing that depressed me. Ever since the quarantine, the streets of Shinjuku were pretty empty at night. Even now, the only people on this road were Okazaki and me. Unless we stop the incidents from occurring and get ahead of Adonis, all our work is for naught. I should review all our basic info on Adonis. Oh, I get a quiz, right? According to the files Yanagi gave me... Adonis was thought to be a rather large group, the location of its headquarters was unknown. However, since they had continued to operate after Shinjuku's quarantine, their members must have been hiding in this district. Additionally, two years ago, Adonis had been exposed and dismantled. Its parent organization was fanatical and declared a national revolution as its goal. Adonis had only re-emerged recently. Some believed that this was a new group, but it was likely that the Adonis that was dismantled two years ago was just a decoy organization. For what point? And there was one more thing. 
Apparently, Sasazaka had recently obtained this top-secret intel from the police database. Two years ago, when Adonis was exposed after the assassination attempt on the Prime Minister, there had been an Adonis mole within the police. That mole was an SP officer. Do we know who that was, specifically? Something bothering you, Ichika? Oh, um... He had just been making small talk while I was thinking, but I jumped a little as he voiced exactly what I'd been thinking. That something was bothering me? Am I really that absent-minded? However, this could be just the opportunity I was waiting for. Well, Okazaki, how much do you know about the assassination attempt on the Prime Minister years ago? Okazaki was an SP officer. He might have at least heard some rumors. I could try to probe for information. I am familiar with that incident. I was involved, after all. Uh... Okazaki nodded. His usual smile disappeared. He was involved? I didn't know that. As part of the SP? Yep. As you might expect, veteran officers were assigned to the Prime Minister's detail. My post was at the PM's official residence, along with my comrades. Okazaki's voice was quiet. I could tell that it was tinged with sorrow. Should I have asked? The intel that Sasazaka acquired had been classified as top secret within the force. If Okazaki started wondering how I knew that information, it would be problematic. Though, I don't think he'd suddenly suspect me. I had a valid pretense to keep prying. This was the moment to be bold. Um, I heard a rumor that there was a traitor within the SP during that incident. Uh. Okazaki's breath caught in his throat. His eyes widened, and his fists were bald. Does he know something about it? There were discrepancies between the announced security deployments and schedules, and the actual patrols that occurred that day. It took a while for Okazaki to figure out a response. So, everything was chaotic. Errors allowed terrorists to breach our defenses. The Prime Minister was safe, but the peon's official residence burned down. SP took the blame for it. Oh, Okazaki. But, yeah, I knew it. Emotion disappeared from Okazaki's eyes, as if he had finally come to accept something. Maybe he knew something about the spy. Maybe this topic was something that was too sensitive for me to have broached. Maybe the spy was... someone that Okazaki knew. No, he was an active officer at that time. If he was involved in a security failure that bad, he would have been severely reprimanded. The police did not take these matters lightly. So that means he... You see, I didn't do my job. Suddenly, Okazaki was back to smiling once again. But it was a woefully sad smile. I survived, but only through the sacrifices of my friends. Oh. Even though my duty as SP was to protect others even at the cost of my own life. So, I want to be sure I protect my charge this time. <sighs> he was very quiet. I didn't know if I was meant to hear that. But I could feel that the words had surely come from Okazaki's heart. Assassination attempt added to materials? Oh, sorry. I got a text. From... Yanagi. I spoke with Shiroshi. We're certain that there's a mole within the police. The one besides him? It's also likely that they're lurking around you. Be careful. Yanagi had sent me a text message that confirmed my suspicions. We had suspected there was a mole but Yanagi declaring it a certainty was enough reason to act upon it. The person that put this collar on me is close. I was now facing a reality I'd been trying to dodge ever since I joined the investigation. Did Yanagi text you because he's worried? Uh, yeah. It was the truth, so I just nodded. <laughs> so he does actually care after all. He doesn't trust me very much. Delivering that line with his trademark grin... Okazaki returned to his usual mood. I let out an involuntary sigh of relief. I muttered to myself. He doesn't trust Okazaki, and here I thought he'd found a reason to be less cautious about him. Though, if that wasn't true, 
Yanagi couldn't have left me alone with Okazaki so casually. That's right. He knows he wouldn't hurt you. But if the mole in the police force is near me, doesn't that make Okazaki a possible suspect? No, he's already been ruled out. No, if the risk was that high, then he definitely would have kept him away. That's right. Hmm? What's wrong? No, nothing. I couldn't stop my doubts from surfacing. Besides, I don't think his expression and his story earlier were part of an act. I didn't want to suspect Okazaki after seeing how pained he felt about other people making sacrifices to save his life in the past. This is a tough one. All I could do was try to think of a way I could help. I guess this is an Adonis scene? Uh. Yes, I'm alone. There's no one nearby who could overhear us. So, it's my turn next. Do I really have to do this? I understand. There's no turning back now, but... I've been looking out recently. Yes, several of us have been captured. As soon as I make a move, they'll catch me too. Even though you know that, you still want me to do that? You've granted me my wish. I'm grateful to you for what you've done. But I've already paid my dues. I've stuck to my end of the bargain. And yet you still want... No, I'm not trying to run at all. I know what needs to be done. I know that it'd be pointless to stop now. A kindred spirit? Sure I am. You just plan to dispose of me anyway. Hmm? I'll call from Kazuki. Akito, are you okay? Uh, yeah. My sister said she wants to thank you for looking out for me. Huh? Did I do that? Yeah, like, when you go to practice with the band, you let me crash at your place. Oh, yeah. I guess that's right. When you're free, you come over to my place. She said you'll be our guest. <sighs> Her cooking isn't so bad. I think it's pretty good, actually. So, let me know when you're free. Uh, okay. Hey, Kazuki, do you think I can meet with your sister alone? Huh? Just the two of you? Since when were you two close? Well, I'm kind of nervous, but... You said your sister's a cop, right? I think I need some advice from her. Aww. Uh, is that okay with you? It looks like you two made up, so... I was really hoping to ask for this favor. If you're okay with that, it's fine by me. I don't think she'll be of much help. Hey! Don't think much of your sister. She actually might be the best person to talk to of all. Yeah? Alright then. Give me your sister's number. I'll let her know the time myself. Well, that was convenient timing. I'm sorry for lying to you, Kazuki. I don't want to get you involved. I've been flagged. That's obviously why Ichika suddenly wants to talk to me. I always thought I wanted to make them taste the same pain. I thought that I'd have no regrets, no matter the cost. I made up my mind back then. But I'm going to inflict the same fear that Kanade felt onto someone else. It might even be worse. Is this what I really wanted? Will this really help me atone? I'm scared. I don't want to do this anymore. Hanako Kobayashi has been arrested for the November murders and her connection to the officer abductions and murder in May. However, her capture hasn't led to any noteworthy results. We're continuing to investigate the past cases, but no progress to speak of has been made yet. We'd like to at least grab Adonis by the tail, but... We managed to uncover a connection between the December incidents and past incidents quickly this time. SRCPO. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We saw when Morioka called upon us. Others in the room turned toward us, and the room's hostile tension intensified. You've been tasked with supporting the June investigation. Have you made any progress? No, I'm afraid we still have no actionable leads. Ch! Who invited these amateurs? Shh! They can hear you! What should I do? Should I bring up Akito here? Uh, I don't think so. 
Since he had specifically called out SRCPO for information about June, there was no doubt that HQ also had their eye on Akito. Oh boy, I have to mention him. Yeah, I mean, if they're already looking into him, it's not like we're pointing the finger. I shouldn't withhold information from them. They'd know once they read the file anyway. Everyone here was a veteran investigator. Still, I thought it best to avoid calling attention to Akito by name. I wouldn't call it progress, but I thought it might be a good idea to re-interview people who had alibis at the time of the incident. The related people list for June is quite large. That's true. The other investigators are already doing that. It may be difficult to deal with this larger pool, but we've managed to turn the number considerably. If these are proxy killings, their alibis are going to hold up. We're not likely to find hard evidence. We'll have to wring an admission from them. I want all personnel on this. Yes, sir. Understood. Then, let's continue. Regarding September. <sighs> I don't think my suggestion did any good. I think I should have been a little bit more specific. Phew. Not much progress to speak of at the meeting. Yeah, like the commissioner mentioned, it's kind of stalled out. So long as a new homicide doesn't happen. True. I'm trying to prevent it. Oh yeah, Hoshino. Make sure you take your break while you can. Yes, thank you, sir. Following Mochida's post-meeting suggestion, I opened my lunchbox at my desk. I ate while flipping through some files. This was how I'd spent all my lunch breaks lately. Gotta do what you gotta do. A text? Huh? It's from Makito. He must have gotten my number from Kazuki. But why is he contacting me directly? Because he ain't no fool. Sorry to trouble you out of the blue. You must be at work. But do you have a moment to talk? It's quite alright. I'm the one who said I wanted to talk to you. I'm on break now. I can spare a few minutes. Thanks. Can we meet at the park near the police station? I'm in the area now. Okay, I'll head over. Give me a minute. Got it. I checked the reply and put my phone away. I was suddenly anxious. I put away my half-eaten lunch and stood up from my desk. Mochida, I'm going out for a bit. I'll be back when my break is over. All right, see ya. Oh, that was good timing. To call me right when I was on break. Akito! Hello. Akito was already at the park when I arrived. When I called his name, he stood up from the bench and bowed toward me. Hi, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Please, don't be. I'm the one that called you away from your work. I'm the one that's sorry. It's alright, have a seat. Okay. We sat down on the bench together. First off, I needed to properly express my gratitude to Akito. It wasn't just an act to me. I want to truly thank you for always looking out for Kazuki. I hope it wasn't a bother to let him stay. Not at all. I'm glad to be able to have him over. I'm happy to hear it. It looks like you managed to have a good talk with Kazuki. Huh? He's changed a lot over the past few days. Oh, you've noticed that, huh? It's actually showing outside of just our communications. Before, he didn't like seeing you. And he's always avoided talking about you. Yeah... But he mentions you a lot lately. He worries about your job and tries to remember to take care of the chores at home. Aww. So you care that much, Kazuki? Kazuki never hated you, but you're important to him and he was being honest with himself. He wanted you to acknowledge him, but he didn't know how to tell you. Yeah, I know that now. I've been worried about him for a long time now, so I'm glad you both get along now. I was really hoping you two didn't grow so far apart, you were unable to speak to each other. Thanks, Akito. I'm happy that I can speak with him easier. I think it's because Kazuki had a good friend like you to support him. Akito's words suddenly connected with something in my mind. Being unable to speak with each other. Maybe Akito was worried about that because of his memories of his sister. Him worrying about my relationship with my brother would only make more sense. Is that all? Huh? Did you really skip out on work just to thank me for helping Kazuki? Uh... 
I could see from the look on Akito's face that he had come here today because he had prepared himself for this meeting. He obviously knew that I suspected him. I need to tread carefully. Ah, oh, we're gonna ask him about Kazuki. Let's skirt the issue first. Let's not dive right into it. He is just a kid. Let's ease him into it. Actually, it's a little embarrassing to ask about this again, but I wanted you to tell me about Kazuki. Huh? I know that Kazuki likes music and plays in a band now, but I still want to know more about him. I want to know what Kazuki's like when he hangs out with you. I was trying to lower Akito's guard. Okay, there we go. Now we get our strategy. But I did actually want to know this. What kind of friends did Kazuki have? I needed to verify this first. Kazuki tries really hard. Akito was surprised by my question, but he immediately answered with a smile. He's putting his heart into his music. He's got some skill and he works hard. Even professionals have complimented him. It isn't just a hobby for him. He's trying to put his life into his music. Please support him. Okay. I think he'll get mad if I go to a concert, though. Do you play in a band, too? My hobby is composing music. Oh, that's why you hang around with them, huh? Composition? That's impressive. Oh, I'm just an amateur. It's really just a hobby to me. Have you ever thought about submitting your compositions to a band? Yeah, but only indie groups for now. But Mr. Ishiki took an interest in my work and lets me use a studio to compose and record. Wow, you're more into this than I imagined. You're basically pro-level if you're in a studio. Yeah, when I get really caught up in my work, I could stay in there for a whole week. By the way, that was the case back in June too. Huh? I'm on the studio surveillance cameras, and the staff all knew I was there too. The police too, of course. <sighs> Ichika, do you suspect me for the thing in June? He cut straight to the point. I'm getting around my work. Oh, I have to say yes. Yeah, to be quite honest, I do. They suspect you at the police station too. So, I wanted to talk to you first. There's still time if you... It's too late. I decided that I couldn't lie to Akito. When I gave it to him straight, it seemed to pain him. Too little, too late. I can't go back anymore. My sins are too heavy to atone for. Akito... You can't stop me either. It won't make any difference to Adonis. Akito now basically completely admitted to his involvement. I had to tell him to give himself up. Akito... If you think you've done something wrong, then I beg you, turn yourself in. Your sentence will be lighter if you do, I can assure you of that. <sighs> Akito had gone silent. His expression was pained. Sorry, Akito. Huh? I can't say I understand the pain that you must be feeling. <sighs> Akito sharply inhaled and looked up at me. His eyes were... wavering. But if you heap more sin onto the pile and cause more pain, in the end you'll just become like the people that hurt your sister. You'll just create more sadness and anger. The cycle of hate and revenge will never end. I... I know that. I've known for a long time. Then why do you look like you're suffering so much? <sighs> if you don't mind me saying, you look like you're blaming yourself, Akito. Do you really think that your sister would have wanted you to take revenge like this? <sighs> to be honest, I don't think of my sister all that often. Huh? You didn't listen to Kazuki, and you didn't really make an effort to understand him. When I said that I was pulling for the two of you to make up, I thought that you were powerless like me, and you'd lose what was important to you one day. I thought your job as a cop was just a title. I won't deny that. But I was just projecting. I just made assumptions about what you were like. Akito, you're right. The ones I hate the most of all weren't the people who harassed my sister to death. I blame myself. I couldn't protect my sister. More than anyone else, I can't forgive myself for being unable to stand up for her. While I was in denial, I pursued revenge. I thought there was no other way, but... I really, really regret it. Akito, there's still time. It's impossible. I can't undo what I've done. 
There's no way to take back my sins. You're misunderstanding me, Akito. I'm not talking about your sins in the past. I want you to think about your future actions. <sighs> All right, and we're going to stop there because if he's ha if he's dot dot dotting, it means he hasn't acted yet, I think. So I'll find out in the next episode. So I hope to see you there or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me. Day really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.